This is Friday, August 11th, and this is 11 Labs training. And we are Geek Out Fridays. If you've never joined us, we're marketing automation Zoom calls. And what we do is we just try to find a topic that we'll all talk about and show you how we're using it, show you how uh, which plans we, we purchase and how we're integrating it with our complete vision of auto blogging with AI. And so today, 11 Labs, the, the, the reason we're going to go over 11 Labs, this is the automate the voiceover automation that we're using. There are a lot of different voiceovers out there uh, that you can use. However, this is the best one. And I say that because I've, I've been doing vo voiceover work. I've been on the production side of it. I've been on the automation side of it. And I've also sold software that was voice automation or voiceover work. And in the early days, it was synthetic voices provided by tools like Google and Microsoft had their synthetic voices. A lot of people on JVZoo rushed out and made all these different software. Well, this is different. This is voice synthesis. Is It takes real voices, synthesizes it into a digital pattern, and then whenever you give it a script, it will match that digital pattern up with the script and form a synthesized real person's voice on it. And it gives you also the ability to import other people's voices along with your own voice. And we're gonna go over that today as we go through the call. Here's the game plan. I'm gonna give you the strategy overview first. And we're not an affiliate with 11 Labs, but we highly endorse 11 Labs. So you'll have to pick out your own plan but it is fully integrated in with AI Mash. So once you have the integration uh, set up, you'll be able to add voiceover uh, player above your content on all the blogs. And we host that video or the audio for you so you don't have to. So let's get on with the show. So here's what we're gonna cover today, how to get your API, and Wayne will spend a little bit of time just kind of going over the features with 11 Labs. It's not very hard to do, okay? Which pricing plan you need? They, I think that you have a free version, but I don't think the API comes with the free version. So he, he'll go over that with you. And then we're going to talk about how to add celebrity voices. Uh, there's several different ways to do it. And we talked on a previous call about why would you need celebrity voices? Which one would you use? My example is I love Paul Harvey. That is a trusted news radio voice. And Matthew McConaughey, he's probably the most popular voice that is recognizable in the U.S. And there's so many more. So you pick out what you think is a recognizable voice. We'll, we'll talk about how you can do this and different methods. You can use Fiverr. You can pull it off of Audible. And, and there's different ways to doing it. Uh, but then we'll talk about how to add your own voice. And yesterday, while I was <laughs> at the house, I opened up my laptop, used the microphone on the laptop, and just started reading scripts, movie scripts. And I turned it off. I had about three minutes of recording. And Wayne's going to show you uh, how to add Damon Nelson's voice in there. Okay? So, we're going to go to the demo, and Wayne's going to take over the, the screen in just a second, and we're going to show you the basics of setup and adding voices. And the real power is the automated, the automated voiceovers when you add it to AI Mash. And we'll come back, and we're, we've got some tips that we'll show you about summarizing. And, in fact, I'll go over it now, and maybe Wayne can cover it on a, inside of AI Mash. We have a 100-word summary. To save a little bit of money on 11 Labs, this is about a 30-second clip, a little, maybe a little less. I create a 200-word summary to use in other applications, make videos, or you can just use it. This is about a 60-second clip, okay? This is good for YouTube Shorts. Uh, then we have one that is special. It's a voiceover speechwriter. It's a 200-word, but it's naturally readable style. So it's it's in the it's in the style of the way Paul Harvey used to read his speeches. They were all short sentences, very punctuated, had a lot of pausing in there. 
And that's what we built into this. Shorter sentences with pauses, great for adding to a podcast or an X post, okay? Then we're gonna talk a little bit about the difference between Fox and TMZ. And we'll show you, you know, on the selection, but Fox is more of a news report style, similar to what you would hear on the nightly news summary. TMZ is more sensationalized news reporting. Uh, if you've ever watched the TV show TMZ or you've ever been in the grocery store aisle and you started looking at magazines, that's what we're talking about, about TMZ style, okay? Great for topics that are people focused, okay? Just keep that in mind. Uh, Wayne, you ready to take over? Yeah. Okay. Share my, stop sharing. You should be able to share your screen. You should see my AI robot on the desktop. Yep. Marvelous. I'll bring down my... Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, so 11 Labs is at, obviously, it's at 11labs.io, if you haven't got it. And this is the software that allows you to type in some text choose a voice that they've got with you inside the account. So they've got some predefined ones and you just, you can have a listen to them and then it will create an audio file with that text in that voice. So before we go into that, in the subscription, we've got a rich plan. So if you go for the free one, Obviously, it gives you some idea of what it's for, for hobbyists, etc. It's free forever. You do get API, but you get 10,000 characters a month. You only get three custom voices. It's quite limited, to be fair. And you probably fill that up quite quickly. But if you want to go in and give it a blast just to play around, you could select this one. The starter one, though, is $5 a month. But the first time you hit it, they'll give you 80% off. So you can you, you can have it for a dollar. So you get everything that's in the free one, but you get 30,000 characters, which is obviously a bit better. And then you get to create more custom voices. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But in the free one, once you've created three voices, you can't create any more. So in the next one up, you can create 10. You do get a commercial license with this one, which you don't get in the free. Basically allows you to use the audio anywhere you like. So I recommend really going for this one for a dollar, and then it's $5 a month. Then as you start to see the power of it and what we're doing, you'll probably quickly jump to creator. And I think this would be, depending on how many websites you've got and how much you really hit it, this would probably be the one that you stay on. This is the one that I'm on at the moment, but I am ready to scale. I can see me jumping to this one pretty quickly. But there is an option in the subscription up here. You've got an enable usage. So if you tick that slider over, when you go over the 100,000 characters, they'll allow you to carry on and they'll charge you at this price here so 30 cents for every extra thousand characters so i'm doing that at the moment because of, i while i'm testing and scaling some sites i can see not hitting the 99 but maybe getting to 40 which is still cheaper than jumping over so until this you can see i'm currently at 33 so I have gone over another $11.30 and it renews in 11 days. So I'm doing all right at the moment at this and I'll keep going until that gets bigger than 99. Then it's time to jump to this one. Now I've got a site that most people have seen called Sporting Excitement. I won't be doing audio on that one because this, it's far too big and popular and it would burn through the credits quite quickly. So regarding on plans, if you've never done it before, I would go for starter, give it a whirl, and then see how you get on, and then jump as according to how, how you're getting on with it. So 
it's quite the, the website itself is quite easy to use. Speech synthesis. This is where you select the voices. I'll skip over the top few because I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And these are the ones that I've got built in into my account. So if you wanted to see what Grace sounds like, you click the play. If you surrender to the wind, you can ride it. Or Harry. Kindness is more important than wisdom. And the recognition of this is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, he's a bit fast. A man sees in the world what he carries in his heart. So they're pretty good. So if I wanted to use Adam, you can in the voice settings play around with stability. You can have it more variable this way, or you can have it more stable that way. And the little eyes obviously give you what it means. So it can make the speech more excessive without put varying between regenerations. It can also lead to instabilities. So the more like stable you want it, the more accurate it looks and, and, and basically the more stable. Sorry, if you go that way, it's the opposite effect. It makes it like more humanized, but it can sometimes be a bit too quick and it sounds a bit fake. Obviously, the middle is the best place. Play around with it, see what you get. And the clarity, well, we can we can try this. Let's see what we got. We've got 75% on high. So if I get some simple text, I'll just type. This is a test for Geek Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. And then you click Generate. This is a test for Geek Out Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. So if we bring this clarity down, generate again. This is a test for Geek Out Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. Do you see how that slowed it down? I think that made it better than what it was. It was too fast the other way. So probably 50% is probably a pretty good one to have. Let's mess with the stability. Bring that down. So we've got unstable there. So let's give that a bash just to see. This is a test for Geek Out Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. It wasn't bad, but he went a bit high in the middle. And if we go over to more stable. This is a test for Geek Out Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. That was quite, quite good, to be fair. So you get the idea. Whatever text you put in here, it's going to convert it into the voice that you select up here and with the settings down here. This drop down is a, got a multilingual version. It was in beta, but I think it's out now. The 11 Labs English is the most stable, but this one up here allows you to do uh, different languages. I haven't used it as yet, but it sounds interesting if you've got a Spanish or a French site and you want audio for it. Because remember, some, some of the SEO opportunities out there can be in a different language. So that'd be good to have audio as well on the site. So we'll stick to the English V1. So how do we create a celebrity voice? So I've done some already, as you can see at the top. I've got Arnie, David Attenborough, James Earl Jones, Matthew McConaughey, Morgan Freeman, Stephen Fry. We'll click, say, Stephen Fry, give you the idea of what that's like. Those of you who know Stephen Fry is, he's the guy that read. This is a test for Geek Out Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. And we all know who Arnie is. <laughs> Let's bring these down to 50. This is a test for Geek Out Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. So how did I do this? Well, the cheat that we've come up with, and, and Damon mentioned it on the intro, was going to Audible and finding a book that's been read by the person. Make sure there's no music in the background, because some, some of them have got some little music playing. And you can see I've picked one here, with Life on Our Planet with David Attenborough. So when you click the sample, you get up to four or five minutes of him talking. Is a monument to the capacity of humankind to lose everything it needs 
and everything it treasures. So what we do is we record the screen because obviously we can't download the audio. So if you've got something like Camtasia or on a Mac, I use a little tool called, and it should be somewhere, there we go. It's called CleanShot and it's quite inexpensive. I'm sure it was only about 20 something pounds, 30 bucks, something like that, one off. Uh, but it's really good, it allows you to edit screenshots and all kinds of stuff, but you can record the screen with it. So we record the screen and I'm gonna press space and say this screen. So I'm gonna click. And then all we do is we make sure that we're recording the audio. And then we just make a video. Because it's complaining here. So inside of, I'm trying to remember where it is. While Wayne's doing that, <laughs> I, I can answer some questions that came up. All good. Okay. Uh, can we synthesize our own voice? Yes, we're going to show you how in just a second on that. Uh, there's an upgrade with Hey Jen. Uh, maybe at the end of the call, we can get really geeky. And Wayne's already investigated Hey Jen with this combination. And it's absolutely going to blow your mind what you can do with um, a good voice and a good image of a person. So we've got that. Uh, any other questions I can answer? Let's see. Yeah, Tim. Tim mentioned that why are not why others are not using this yet. It's it. Eleven Labs is fairly new to the business, but if you've done a lot of voiceover work, you you can kind of see the difference in quality. You can hear it, and it's it's absolutely amazing what it can do with professional cloning voices. Yeah, Tim. Tim mentioned that uh, why or not. I think it's going to work. When we're on a Zoom call, obviously the drivers are flipped so that you can hear what we're saying. So when I'm recording on my machine, you have to make sure you, we've got the clean shot drivers running. If you're not on a Zoom call, it just you don't have to bother doing any of that. So, so what we would do is I would record the screen just like you was doing a presentation or something. We humans alone on earth are powerful enough to create worlds and then to destroy them. On the 26th of April, 1986, reactor number four of the nearby Vladimir Ilyich Lenin nuclear power plant known to every... Basically, we can stop that video. We can have a quick preview of it. We humans alone. So we know we've got the audio, which is good. And then you save. So now we've got a video on this machine of that screen grab, which, which is there. As you can see, I'll minimize it there. So on a, on a Mac, this is the QuickTime player. And then on a Windows machine, it would be the Windows player. I'm pretty sure both have got the option to go to file, export, audio only. And MP3 works and QuickTime uses M uh, M4A, which works as well. So you can just save that. So now we've got the audio. If I double click it, oops, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want Apple Music running. I'll right click, as you can see, I'll bring this into the view so you can see what I'm doing. I'll right click and open with QuickTime. So there it is up here. We'll close the original one down. We humans alone on earth. So you can see now that we've, we've grabbed the audio very nicely from Audible. You can do the same thing with YouTube. So if you find someone so you can search for a book or you can search for a video of someone that's talking and record the sound and then you've got it. So to turn this into a voice that's usable, if we go into voice lab, you'll see we've got this little box here, add generative or clone voice. So if we click that, we can then go into what type of voice are we creating? 
a voice design, design entirely new voices by adjusting their parameters. Instant voice cloning is clone a voice from a clean sample recording. I've got one where you can pull from what other people have done in the community and bring them into your account. And this one, I think, is you can pay for someone to do one for you. So we want instant voice cloning. Let me give it a name. So I'm going to put, I'm going to call him Dave Attenborough at the moment because I've got one called David already. Dave Atten. And then you simply drag or upload the, where is it? It's on the desk. No, it's not. I'm going to close that. Find it in Finder. Desktop. There we go. Drag that into here. We humans alone. Now, I obviously, I've only got we humans um, alone on Earth. I only did it for 30 seconds. It's best to do it for a, a, at least a minute or so. And then you can give it a description. This is the David Atten. Didn't think I'd spell that wrong. There we go. Used in Geek Out Friday's Zoom call. And then obviously we're just going to have to tick this little box and say no more about it. <laughs> it's basically saying, I hereby confirm that I have all the necessary rights and consents to upload and clone these voices. Whether we have or whether we haven't is up to yourselves. We're not doing anything malicious with it, really. We're just voicing a voiceover for the website. And we click Add Voice. And that's it, really. We can now click on Use. Now, I'd have thought, surely it must have to read that MP3 and go through it uh, and build something. And, and now it's already done it. So now we can use our new Dave Attenborough with this. This is a test for Geek Out Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. Mind boggling. <laughs> so impressive. Yeah. So once you've got these voices, you can obviously put as much text in as you want. You can download the MP3s, do whatever you want with them. Uh, but we've gone one step further, as we know, with AI Masher. I'll sh show you in a bit. But to create your own voice, it's exactly the same as what we've just done with this one, but obviously you use a recording of yourself. So if we go back into Voice Lab, and we go Add, Instant Voice Cloning. So here now, I can go Damon Nelson. Uh, got the MP3 that he sent me. Just dragged it in. Oh no, it was there. Wasn't looking. This is Damon Nelson, and I approve these clips for 11 laps. This is Damon Nelson, and I approve these clips for 11 laps. So there we go, Damon. You want the moon around it? Pull it down. I'll give you the moon. I can't learn anything from you that I can't read in some fucking book, unless you want to talk about Oops. you. <laughs> a bit of you? And I'm fascinated. I'm in. But you don't want to do that, do you, sport? I'm trying to find out where the player is. What you might say. Right. Wayne, just restart Level Labs. I'm telling you the story of right. Sometimes it, it has a hidden player and you can't delete or you can't turn it off. Yeah. But if you heard a little bit about what I was reading, Basically, I went to Google and I said, movie quotes, popular movie quotes. And I just read down a list of movie quotes. I put, I paused in between each, scrolled down, read the next sec section. And I was using a microphone that's built into an old laptop. So the quality is just not there. I was at the house instead of here in the studio office. But the better microphone, the better audio recording you get, the better your your own custom voice is going to sound. So go ahead and play that. This is a test for Geek Out Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. This is a test for Geek Out Fridays. We are showing the skills of 11 labs. Hmm. I think for once that didn't really sound like you. Yeah, you have to play around with the voice settings. And if I was going to, it, ideally is, I would have recorded it from the studio mics up here and tuned out the background noise. Uh, so this is a test for Geek Out Fridays. Yeah, it's um, 
we've 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 done them a lot. I mean, you've just seen how we did the David Attenborough one. That was really good. Yeah, and the best audio you will ever get is off Audible because they're they are studio tuned Audible clips. So you know, it's it, play around with your voice and and the microphone you use. Also, if it's it's good if you don't have a cold and you're coughing in between everything. <laughs> My voice has changed dramatically over the last week, so it, the it's a it's a good indication you need to use a good mic in a room that's not echoey. In fact, um, we've got Don Roberts. Don has already done his custom voice. Uh, Don, uh, can you join us on the call here? I'm going to bring Don in on the call. Okay. Don, you there? I am here. Tell us how you do your voice recording. Well, I, I happen to have had a, a YouTube video from a few years ago where I was promoting my own uh, SEO services. And because I tend to do a lot of ums and ahs in there, I recorded it in Audacity and then just edited it all out. So it was a nice, clean recording. No background noise. or The room, as far as I could tell, was uh, not echoing. And so uh, I just simply uploaded the YouTube video into Eleven Labs. And uh, what came out, I thought sounded quite a bit like me. Yeah, and I, I would do the same. I just wanted to, I wanted to do my voice in the cheapest way possible because we we do have a few customers that don't want to spend any money at all. So that's fine. I, we we all have our budgets. But if you have a laptop, you can do this. I would suggest getting into a room with no echoes, maybe some curtains on the windows and uh, no background noise, like a fan or an AC, and just read some scripts. That's, yeah, that's basically uh, what I have set up. I have a carpet in my office. And I mean, it, it, you know, are you going to invest in your business or not? I, I, I bought a, a blue Yeti, and I think it sounds pretty good. You have a cheap microphone, it's, it, the recording is going to come out, you know, maybe not as great, but uh, if you can kill the background echoes and just, you know, make sure there's no music and, uh, you know, someone yeah. doing the uh, mow and blow outside, it's probably going to come out just fine. Yeah. And, and somebody, Tony Grant posted this. He did a voice of a TV chef. It had pots and pans clicking and bubbling in the background. But Eleven Labs did an excellent interpretation of those samples, so it's it you're going to have to play around with it a little bit uh, to get it just right. But uh, it it does such a good job that you're going to be only using two or three voices when you start automating it. And I thought the recording that I did it was pretty upbeat, and when it uh, when it came over to Eleven Labs, and then I you know did the sound sampling um, with the text. I thought, well, it sounds a little bit like maybe not as much emotion in there. So I just fiddled around a little bit with one of the settings and it just put that a little bit in back right back in there. And I, I think I think it adds a lot to, uh, you know, uh, a video uh, a post or a post on one of your blogs for a quick summary. I, I think it's great. And here's some tips on recording because I, mean, I used to do voiceover work a lot is Lean into the mic. If you have the opportunity, stand up and talk. Uh, your your voice is a lot clearer, but definitely have a straight back or lean into it. Uh, yesterday when I was recording, I was at the kitchen table and I was kind of leaning back in the opposite direction with a really cheap mic on an old computer. So it it works, but the better quality equipment, the, the more soundproof your office is, the better recording you're going to get. And there's some tools like Audacity and Adobe has some products and Camtasia has some products that will clean up your voice a little bit and tune it up before you send it over. And you only need about a three minute clip and you could read anything that, I mean, it doesn't have to be about internet marketing. So I was reading speeches from, I guess uh, I, I did it. It's a wonderful life. And then I had uh, some other uh, Capone <laughs> in there and, and several other uh, movies that I like. So just find you something that you can read. You may have to read through it a couple times first and then record it. If you have ums, ahs, and buts in there, clean those up before you send it over. Okay. Uh, Wayne, any tips on your side? 
in, in our Masha, yeah, if you want me to go into that. Are there any questions we could answer right now while we're inside of 11 labs? Okay, uh, Scott asked about the legality of using another person's voice. Uh, copyright, celebrity of voices. My, my answer to that is you can go to Fiverr. If you're concerned about getting permission to use, go to Fiverr and hire somebody to voice a script in the tone of Matthew McConaughey or Arnold Schwarzenegger. And those you can put in as your uh, voiceover. Me personally, I'm not worried about Arnold Schwarzenegger or uh, Matthew McConaughey coming after him because we do something a little bit different inside of AI Masher. We're about to show you how it's done, okay? So kind of, kind of set aside the legality or the copyright of it because Matthew McConaughey's voice is used throughout the internet. Um, and I know he doesn't voice everything. Uh, so in the coming years, there's going to be a transitional shift in the way that we view things because you won't be able to tell whether it's AI or real. Uh, and, and at the end of the call, we may even visit hey Jen to look at some things. Okay, it looks like we're clear. I, I think we've answered everything. Yeah. I think so. And if you're concerned about the legality, you just don't use it. Use your own yeah. voice. Uh, or use, a, use one of the built-in voices. The built-in voices are incredible. In fact, yeah. there is one that is American old male voice, and it is, uh, it's Matt, uh, Paul Harvey. I mean, it, if you've ever listened to Paul Harvey, and it's their voice. I mean, they they it's included in, in the section, so... You know, play around. They've got some really good voices in there, too. The, in fact, the one that he read was Adam, and that sounded like a, a narrator on Audible called, I forgot what his name is, but it, it, there's some good voices in there, okay? And there's some that you'll think, I've heard that before, and you'll realize you've seen a YouTube video or an ad on Facebook or something, and it's it's an AI voice. That's why you recognize it. The the wife was watching something the other day on her phone, and I went, oh, that's an AI-generated voice. She goes, how do you know? So I just recognize it and, and because you, you just get to know. And if, like, if we play Alex here. Be here now. Be someplace else later. Is that so complicated? And then if there's one that you like, you, you, can, add, you can add it into your own account. These are the ones that are in the voice library. And there's quite a few, so you can, like, look through and choose. So you don't have to go through the you know creation of what we did here. But when I show you the final result, you think, oh, that's really good. <laughs> uh, so 11 Labs has got an API, another reason why it's been chosen. And you go into profile and you can just copy it here and you're away. So you go into AI Masher, suppose that you've got it, and then we can go into integrations, 11 labs. And then you drop the key in there, and you click update, and then you'll see this grid below. When you click get voices, it brings all the voices in that you've got in your account with, with apply so that you can have a listen. So there's Rachel. Well, the gun is half done. And so on. And I think this guy is pretty good, Anthony. Well, Anthony, I think. Not what we have, but what we enjoy constitutes our abundance. But then it also brings in the ones that you've made with using uh, recordings. Now, in our little grid, we've got web text, and we've made this spin tax now as well. This is the default text that if you use one of these voices, this is what it will show at the top of your blog post if you embed the audio of which AI Masha does for you. But you can see down here, this one from Matthew McConaughey. I actually put this, I think the original one was, listen, listen to a summary in the voice of Matthew McConaughey. So we're not saying it's him. We're not saying by Matthew McConaughey, we're saying in the voice of, which is a little bit of a, a, a get out clause. Or you could put in the style of similar to, you know, that kind of thing. But 
I put that into chat GPT and says, can you give me 10 versions of that? And it did. And then I, I asked it to, can you put them into spin tax code for me? And it did that as well. And then I just pasted it into here. Uh, so you can see now that we've got Matthew McConaughey's voice summary of the article, or we've got here the article summarized in Matthew McConaughey's voice and so on. So every time we use it, it, it will uh, resolve this and get one of them and use it. So that's mixing it up a bit for you. So it's not the same text all the time when you use it. So there's, there's many different ways we can use uh, the voices and things inside of AI Masha. The simplest one is you can go into Article Reinventor and you, we've got URL Article Maker. And in here, you can go through a series of steps. So if there's an, a blog post that you want or like, and I've gone to BBC News and we've got Amazon warns workers to come back into the office. And there's a few pictures and there's a nice bit of text. You can put that URL into here and you can click get article. To do this here, you do need a tool called Scrapeal, which is really quite cheap. And we've also got an agreement with them. While that's doing that, I'll open this in another tab. Scrapeal. If you use this link, and what we did is we gave up our affiliate and allowed them to reduce the price for everyone else. So we don't make any money, but if you use the link, it, it shows you two more plans that aren't there normally. So you, you can see a $5 and um, a $10, I think. Let me just go to scrape all. So if we go to billing, you don't normally see the five and the 10. It starts at 29 a month and 99 and 249. But because you've got link in the software, they when that comes in, they allow you to see the basic and the hobby. It's only for new accounts. If you've already got one, it won't show up. So you'd have to create a new account with a different email to see them. A five a month is, is more than enough, I think. 10,000 API credits, it's plenty. So if we go back. Wayne, let me ask you on that scrape out credits. Is yep. the API credit, is it, they charge you one credit for every call it makes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could you could have 10,000 URLs run through and that's, you could get it with the $5 plan. It's probably two credits because you can't do, you can't do everything all at once with Scrapeal. So we have to get text and then we have to look for images. So oh, I've closed it now. So that could be two calls. So that's so ten. It's still it's still five thousand posts. <laughs> yeah, that's still a lot. I, I don't yeah. want to slow you down there, but you know the the call is about eleven lambs. So let's go ahead and go all the way through the summary. Yeah, yeah. So what this little feature does is it gets the article and it gets any images that was attached. So down here, if you've plugged in your OpenAI, you can use it to clean it up. So we've got a section that let's say it's scraped it and usually at the bottom there's probably some rubbish but things like this we don't really want that blowing horns and fence horse africa's top short they look a bit like ads down there so we've got a bit of a clever if you click clean up article it will go through that text and it will have a good try and work out if anything's out of character in there and get rid of it for you. So things that potentially look like ads or links or what was a link, but it's just left the text behind that we don't want. So if I quickly scroll to the bottom of that, whoops, there, you can see ours ends with when Amazon sent out and this one is there. So you can see it was clever enough to just get rid of all that which is brilliant. So we spent some time on that for you. Right. Then we've got some rewrite prompts. So we can rewrite it in the guise of Fox News for the UK audience, Fox News for the USA audience, and so on. 
We mentioned these. We'll come back to these at, at the end. But I'm going to pick Fox News in the UK and then click rewrite. And what that does <clears throat> is it's now going to rewrite it, but it's going to create a title. It's going to create paragraph text. It's going to create H2 subheadings instead that wasn't in the original. Uh, so it's completely rewritten it and made it SEO friendly as well. Now, the clever bit is the summary. So now we want to summarize this. Give me 100 words, 200 words in the style of the Fox News journalist or the TMZ. Well, I, did I, what did I do before? I forgot now. Was it uh, Fox News? Yeah, so I shall do the same. I'll do 100 words. And then create summary. So now we're using AI again to summarize the article that we've all just rewritten to give us an overview with 100 words. And what we do, when we get that back, we also, we at the end of every sentence, we hard return it because we've noticed that when we send this to 11 Labs, we get some better pauses and sometimes we even get breaths, which is just mind blowing. So at the end of pandemic, you, you, you may or may not get a, a deep breath before that it says Amazon. So now we've got everything plugged in, we've got the voiceover type. You can actually do the full article. You can do the full article without the subheadings, which would be, don't read those, just carry on and read the content. Or we default it to the summary because that's the best, really. You just want a quick, snappy summary, which isn't part of the actual article. It's different text, but it's still giving you an overview of the article. And then you choose a voice. So let me scroll the screen and then go, I'm going to pick Matt. And then we click Create Audio. <clears throat> so what we're doing now is we're using the API. We're going to send the summary text. We've told you what voice we want. It's going to come back. It gives us an MP3. We then put that on our cloud for you. So you haven't got to worry about where it is. You haven't got to bother about downloading it. We host all the audios for you. It'll give you a link. So if you want to do anything with it or download it to your own machine, you can. And then it gives you the title across the top. And obviously I've got Spintax, so it says this is, this is your title. But obviously when it goes into your website, it will pick just one of them. And then we can have apply. And Amazon has sent a warning, so here we go. Amazon has sent a warning email to its U.S. staff for not spending enough time in the office after their attendance was tracked. Some employees were told they were not currently meeting our expectation of joining your colleagues in the office at least three days a week. This move follows other tech giants such as Disney. How amazing is that? So now what we need to do is, do we want to include uh, images? We can go back up to the top in here and we can just, we can tick that because that's the only one there. So we'll have that. If there was others, you can, you can tick them. So include images and we can actually cite the image. So if you tick that box, it will work out where you got it from and it will create a citation underneath. So we got this from bbc.co.uk. So it will put courtesy of bbc.co.uk. The clever thing there is you can save this as a template and we default a naming convention, which you can edit. But this one's basically saying I'm using this AI account, which if you see, I've got an AI Masher open AI account. So AI Masher open AI. We're doing a cleanup. It's for Fox News. We're doing a summary with Fox News 100 words and it's in the voice of Matthew McConaughey and we're doing a summary. So you can click save as templates and you've now got that template for in the future. And if we click save new article, it's automatically pushed all this into my article. And there it is. And if you want to have a look at it, we click edit. And there it is. <clears throat> so we've got article synopsis as told by Matthew McConaughey. Amazon has sent a warning email to it. And we embed that player for you. There's the image. There's the citation that it's done for you automatically. 
And there's the rewrite of the article. So now you can do, and there's a summary text if you ever want it, if you ever need it. Now you can add it to groups, you can send it to RSS Masha, you can uh, basically just post it direct if you wish. So click on finish. Down here, you can choose your WordPress, you can do the category and you can click post and post it and it's straight in. It's, it's we call it article reinvented because it's a reinvention of that article that was on the bbc.co.uk website, but it's been completely rewritten. It's been uh, humanized with voice and we've got a summary of the text for him to read, which is uh, marvelous really. We have gone one step further, but it's probably outside this call. Uh, we've linked RSS Masha to this to automate it on a big scale. Whether anyone Wayne, wants to know about that. Wayne, go back to Article Reinventor. Yep. Okay. Those templates. The reason we're saving all these templates is you can call these templates from RSS Masher. You can send an RSS feed over to AI Masher and it will completely read that RSS feed. It will either scrape the feed all the way back to the original article, or you can use the RSS feed post, the actual content in the feed itself, and it will use that. But then it will do a Fox News summary, and it will summarize it to uh, 100 words or less, and it will use Matthew McConaughey if you're choosing template number 23. So you got to link it. You can go back into RSS Masher later and you can link them and it will link any of the ones not connected. So uh, this is why we made these templates is so that you can call them from RSS Masher. This is where the real power of automation comes in is we are setting things up. You, you design your template, you design it with the URL that you're going to be using or the RSS feed. And then once you design it, then you can call it with RSS Masher. Once you set it up in a mash, you put your feed, send it to AI Masher, and it's a set it and forget it. It will it will do your voice summary and, and whatever style you want to use. Uh, that's that's the power of these two running together. So uh, Wayne, uh, show how you, you get the new yeah. inner templates. You'll see here we've created one and it says no, linked to RSS Masher. No. So I'll go over to RSS Masher. Obviously, you've got to you integrate API from AI Masher into RSS Masher, <clears throat> and then I'll click Get Reinvented Templates, and you'll see now that it's grown by one. There it is. It's number eighteen in RSS Masher, but in AI Masher it's twenty three. And there's the twenty three. But you don't have to worry about these IDs. Um, this is the bit that you're interested in. So when you go to a mash, and I'll, I'll show you one that I've done, it's called Seconds Away. It's about boxing, so I'll click Edit. And then in the website feed, you'll notice we've got extra columns now over here. And this is where you select the template that we've brought in. You'll see that this one's selected, AI, um, uh, Cleanup, Summary, Matthew McConaughey. And then the next field is, are you going to pass me content, which is in the RSS feed, or are you going to send me the URL? And obviously, if you just send the URL, then you're going to need scrape out in AI Masha. So we put that in brackets to remind you. The beauty of that is if an RSS feed has got no content, you can still use it. You can send it to AI Masha. AI Masha will scrape it like I showed you in the reinventor. But it's automated now. RSS Masher will pass it to AI Masher. AI Masher in the background for you will run that template and go through all the stages. And then it will spit the answer back to RSS Masher. It will then go through all the tabs as though it was the original article in the feed. And it will start adding money hooks, anchors, helpful content, listicles, whatever you want. So the first time it will it will just pass you the information across, and when it gets the new article, it will then finish the mash automatically, and it will drop it out at the bottom, ready to schedule. 
So you're now scheduling a new unique article that's been reinvented based on an RSS feed. And to give you an idea what it looks like, I can show you the site that's been in test now for a few weeks. So here we've got Anthony Joshua. Well, that's a good one. Weird. Internet glitch. <laughs> there you go. It's working. There's the, it says here the article. TikTok star Bryce Hall is set to enter the ring for a bare knuckle fight against G Perez, a champion from the bare knuckle fighting champ. You can see that obviously that's a summary, which has got no reflection on the same text that's underneath it. Now, the articles I've chosen do have content in the RSS feed. If you use those, you, you can use the advanced to clean it up so that the let's say there's a there's ads in the middle of it or whatever and you want to get rid of those ads and then the images that get passed to ai masha the images will then be put back in when it's been reinvented so if you can do it that way you get the benefit of more images being dropped back in you can see now that you know there's the h2s there's the text there's a silo that RSS Masher did. And obviously then it's it's going to go to booster pages, AI index, uh, and wherever else you want it to go to. Back to the beginning. What else have we got? There's another one, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. And there's the little courtesy of the sun, the code UK. There's the, now these are like reinvented basically. So they're not, for those people that, we're forever thinking about duplicate content in the RSS feed. You can completely eliminate that now. So that's what a site looks like that's actually being used automatically. I, I don't look at this now. It's automated. So it's all going to AI Masher and back, AI Masher then back. And you can see the kind of things that goes on. If you go to AI Masher and you go to a build article, <clears throat> you can see everything that's been coming in and going out. And that'll have a status. So if you're in here early, you'll see that it's set to maybe scraping or creating audio or completed and then sent back to RSS Masher. So you can see there's, there's a lot been going on here. Now, because of the image problem, if you do use URL, which has its advantages, can, especially if a RSS feed doesn't have any content and you still want to use it, then what we do is we only scrape the the, we only give you the first image because it's usually the featured image for the article. We can't guarantee that any of the other images aren't going to ruin the article because they may be. What we've noticed is it, it, because Scrapeal will give you all the images, uh, some of them might be uh, little snippets of don't miss our other article. And it's an image about something else or there's a little ad or something that's been embedded in. So if you use the URL, then we will only give you the first image back. But if you use the content, we will attempt to give you all the images that you've left behind when the article got sent across. And then you end up with things like this. Any questions? Is the Fox News style biased towards conservatism or just in the style of speech? It's in the style of journalistic approach from as if you as a journalist for that paper. It, it doesn't have any biased tendencies to rewrite the article in a in a in a negative or positive sway. Now, what Scrapeal account do you recommend? I would get the cheapest. Okay, so how did I get so many images? That's because I'm sending the content because. My feed that I'm using, the article is in the content. So I, because the advanced tab in RSS Masher will allow you to clean up. I mean, there's a lot going I'm on. I'm back on. Oh, Damon's back. There's a lot going on in the advanced, but you can just put a few statements in the advanced tab to say, get rid of this because it's an ad and it's always in the feed or get rid of this and get rid of that. Um, 
there's a few videos in RSS Smasher that explain how to use this. We could do a Geek Out Friday all about this. But because I've like pre-cleaned it before it goes to AI Masher, we send across all the images it found as well. And AI Masher will remember those images. It will rewrite the article and then it will inject the images back in again when it's when it's finished. It's really kind of trick. So if you, in a nutshell, if your RSS feed has got content, you will potentially get all the images that was in that content. But bear in mind, you might get some images that you may not want because it might be a, a, a redirect to another article that was on that site. So you, you might have to just put a few statements in the advanced tab to say, clean this up whenever you see this or that. I still run the cleanup in AI Masha because when you sometimes miss a statement that clearly was a link to something else that was an ad it will get rid of that for you which is quite nice but it is ai and it's not going to 100 get rid of everything that it thinks is an ad but it, it's it's a really really good it's 90 percent, 92 3 percent accurate it gets rid of footers gets rid of all kinds of stuff some things are going to sneak in but based on the fact that if you was doing it manually you would probably do two a day and get bored Whereas now you can do 40 a day and not worry about it. Because by the time that that one that was slightly wrong, uh, it's probably been bypassed by 10 other articles anyway that's just come out. So what we've done here really is we've managed quantity and quality and automation all at the same time, which I think is a first in this industry. Any more questions? It doesn't, well, there's only one other question and it's from Stan. Can you explain the best use case for AI MASH or RSS MASH or integration? And can it be used to improve articles generated via Article Forge? I can answer part of this is what, what we showed you today is probably one of the best case uses is to convert your RSS feed into original content and add a voiceover, summarize it, Add a voiceover. We're going to be adding a, a feature in there where it leaves the post content, but it will do a curation paragraph above it. So if you want to keep your RSS feed, but you want to curate that article, uh, we're going to be adding some more templates in there for you to choose from. Uh, so that's that's where we're going to be using it. Now, guys, a lot of people say, well, AI Masher, AI tools can only read, you know, back to a year or two years. Well, this is how you read current trending news articles is you capture the news article, you send it to AI Masher, let AI Masher summarize it, put it in your own voice, and then kick it back to you. This is how you get current news in your own style. Can AI Master be used to improve articles generated via Article Forge? We're it's it's down the road where we'll in, do in rewrites of other people's articles because we've actually got something that's going to be a replacement for Article Forge coming quite soon inside yep. of AI Master. Yeah, we're probably going to be replacing Article Forge. Uh, we kind of need to wrap this up, Wayne. Yep. Do you want to show them the, the little thing you showed me yesterday about what you can do with your... Uh, yeah. Uh, do this before you do that. Go yep. back into your publisher in AI Masher. Don asked a very good question. Is if you're in publisher, can you add or can you change out that voice and that voice summary and will it save it as the new one to go in there? Okay. If you if you're in here and it's already got one embedded at the top, we've got create summary down here. So if you forgot to do the create summary, you can do it here. But you can also do a voiceover here as well. So if I wanted to change it to David Attenborough, I could click create audio. It would create a new version using David Attenborough. It would store both of them down here for you. If you notice, we, we dropped this down here for you. That was the link to the original. It will then auto-replace the HTML that's up here. 
In fact, let's do it. Seems to take longer when you're waiting. There we go. So there's the MP3 we got back. We've added it down here so that you've got both versions. But up here, it now says a summary in the article of a summary of the article in the voice of David Attenborough. Amazon has sent a warning email to its US staff. So to answer your question, I think I've just demoed it. <laughs> and then you click update, and then that's the new version that you've got forever. And that'll be the version that goes across to the site. If you wanted to put it back, there's the link to the other one. You would just have to edit the HTML and then change the MP3, which is there. But we do that for you when you use our buttons and our tools. Wouldn't be AI if we didn't do as much as possible for you. Okay, that looks good. I think we answered most of the questions. Uh, somebody asked about a YouTube RSS feed uh, pulling transcripts. At this time, we're not we're not no. focused on that. But it could be down the road when Scrape Owl says they can pull YouTube transcripts. We'll we'll use that. We don't want to add a whole bunch of layers to this before we go public. So what you're seeing is the beta version of AI Masher. We look to go public probably middle of September. So we probably got a bug or two in here and ho hopefully the beta team's passing it up to our support. Okay. A last thing we want to show you, and this is just, this is the geek out part. Yeah. Can you, Wayne, can you go into the DID and the Hey Jim? Yeah. There's a tool called DID. We're getting some API issues at the moment. Uh, but we are looking at the API for DID. And this creates digital humans. So what I did here, just, just quickly as a test, was I went into uh, Midjourney and I asked for it to create me a picture I did say of Matthew McConaughey, but I didn't spend any time on it at all. It doesn't really look like him, but I could have done a face change if I wanted to. I could have spent a bit more time and got it to look like him. I then pulled one of the audios that Eleven Labs built. And if I edit it, I think it's that one. So this was the picture. I dragged him over. This is what was created in, in uh, Mid Journey. I then uploaded an audio. And I said, generate video, and I set it to work. It created this. British heavyweight boxer Anthony Joshua has spoken out against the serious doping problem plaguing the sport of boxing. Joshua's rematch with Dillian White was canceled due to adverse analytical findings in White's drug tests. Josh. Oh, my God, everyone's gone. So what we've been looking at, and it's, probably, it's not going to be on for for the public launch, it's down the road, but we are looking at potentially API and AI masher into something like this so that it could create videos and drop them at the end for you, for you to upload to YouTube as a YouTube short, which then points back to your blog or anything you want, to be fair. YouTube shorts get a lot of traffic at the moment. They're really pushing them quite nicely. So, Let's say you're doing 10 articles a day and it, it's automatically dropping out 10 videos. You could upload 10 videos to your and start building a subscription on a on YouTube or views, more traffic, everything to do with traffic. Traffic's king. Uh, it's not the cheapest. It's not the most expensive, but it's, it's mid-tier. Uh, the API, though, is cheaper because obviously we're just doing calls to it. And so if we can sort that out, we could potentially, uh, but it does watermark them. And to get rid of the watermark is, is quite a lot of money. So we've got to weigh it up whether it's worth it or not. But it is quite impressive, to be fair. The other tool that some of you have mentioned, hey, Jen. Now, this is pretty spooky in a way because this animates arms and all kinds of stuff with from a picture. I think I've got... A a test that I did on Hey Jen. Let me see if I can find it. Where did it go? Well, he's pulling that up. This is the future where AI is going, is combining a, an actor, 
with a voice or a script and having a very realistic person talking to you that you don't know whether it's AI or whether it's it's live. And what you'll start looking for is, does the Adam's apple bob, do, do the ears move a little bit? Do, you know, do, do the yeah. hands move? Can you see him breathing? This is how good it really gets with what where they're going. And this is first gen of generative AI. So a year or two years down the road, your actors, you'll be pulling off of a hey gen. But if you could automate it from an RSS feed and have this guy read your summary, it's going to be absolutely game changing for what we're doing in the future. This this is one of the inbuilt actors in HeyGen, and I uploaded a um, Eleven Labs audio and then told it to get on with it. In a last ditch effort, Rishi Sunak's controversial Rwanda deportation scheme will head to the Supreme Court after being deemed unlawful last month. The Prime Minister is determined to fight off lefty lawyers and charities to ensure the scheme can move forward and flights can finally leave the tarmac. In court orders seen on Thursday, the Court of Appeal granted the government permission to challenge their decision at the Supreme Court. This comes after the Court of Appeal ruled Rwanda as an unsafe country, making it unsuitable as a destination for illegal migrants. However, Home Secretary Sweller Braverman welcomed the decision to appeal and believes the policy is lawful. Unbelievable. Amazing. I mean, it, it, you can see how they've done it. They've obviously got actors there and they've done the movements and everything, but they've managed to work an algorithm out that it knows when to emphasize words with its hands. It's really clever. This one's more expensive than the other one. So obviously when, there's, when they've got competition and it starts to come down in price, it's going to be amazing. Uh, we're looking at both of these tools because the, the, there is some scope. In, in in using these along with everything else that we're doing but we'll get the tool that we've got finished first and then we'll start adding all these clever things and as beta users you'll get all these mods for free so that's it i think really unless we've got any more questions we had a bit of a geek out at the end which makes a change <laughs> but really the this 11 labs you know I would get it, plug it into AI Masher and give it give it a go. I think we might have lost Damon again. Let's just see if there's any more questions. No. Any more questions, any any guy? Anyone?